Houdini Unbound is the story of Harry Houdini, who in 1910 made his first and only visit to Australia. He had seasons in theatres in both Melbourne and Sydney, where he was doing his acts, you know, getting out of straight jackets and unlocking padlocks and immersing himself in trunks and doing all that stuff that we know about Houdini. But he was also, particularly during his Melbourne time, following a new passion, which was flying. Houdini had discovered that no one had yet made a controlled flight in Australia. So he decided that he would be the one to obtain that record. And in a lot of ways, it wasn't much of a record. I mean, this was like six years on from the Wright brothers getting off the ground in the US. It was a year after Blériot had flown across the English Channel. But Houdini had this idea that his feats as an aviator would be remembered long after his escaping days were done. He wasn't right about that, but it does make an intriguing premise for a story. Houdini performing, Houdini trying to get off the ground. I was intrigued by the idea that he had this interest in flying. I didn't know that about Houdini. I was also fascinated when I read that in both Melbourne and Sydney, he did his standard PR stunt, which was to get himself wrapped up in chains and then dive or jump off a bridge, or in the case of Sydney, a diving tower, into the water, disappear from sight, and then reappear a couple of minutes later, out of the chains, heroic. Houdini was an extraordinary storyteller. He was an awful fibber. All his stories were about himself. Very soon after his leap into the river in Melbourne, he claimed to have disturbed a body he said a body had surfaced along the same time as he'd come up from the river. There's no record of this in the newspapers, though. So this was another story that Houdini had told. And I think I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have Houdini in Melbourne in 1910 with a body? Or at least thinking he's disturbed a body. And once I decided this is what I was looking at, I became intrigued by a lot of other things that were happening in Australia at that time. He had his long-suffering wife, Bess, with him. Poor old Bess had to go through life knowing that her husband rated her the number two woman in his life after his old mother. So in Houdini Unbound, Bess in some ways gets a new life. And Houdini doesn't realise that there's already in Melbourne someone who's actually much more famous than he is. Bess spends quite a lot of time with that person. So it's 1910, there's a cast of characters, Houdini's the best known, but all kinds of things start to happen.